Good morning there. How are you doing? It's Tuesday. Glass was open, so I was able to get glass. It is March 15th, 2022. We have our three readings today. Once again, we're in Psalm 105, so it's a long reading. Our Old Testament reading is a little bit long, too. It is Numbers chapter 14, verse 10 through 24. And then our New Testament reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 13. Let us listen in to the scripture today. Thank God. Pray to him by name. Tell everyone you meet what he has done. Sing him songs. Belt out hymns. Translate his wonders into music. Honor his holy name with hallelujahs. You who seek God, live a happy life. Keep your eyes open for God. Watch for his works. Be alert for his signs of his presence. Remember the world of wonders he has made, his miracles, and the verdicts that he has rendered. O seed of Abraham, his servant. O child of Jacob, his chosen. He's God, our God, in charge of the whole earth. And he remembers, remembers his covenant. For a thousand generations, he has been good on his word. It's the covenant that he made with Abraham. The same oath he swore to Isaac, the very statue that he established with Jacob, the eternal covenant with Israel. Namely, I give you the land. Canaan is your hill country inheritance when they didn't count for much, a mere handful and strangers at that, wandering from country to country, drifting from pillar to post. He permitted no one to abuse them. He told kings to keep their hands off. Don't you dare lay a hand on my anointed. Don't hurt a hair on the heads of my prophet. Then he called, called down a famine on the country. He broke every last blade of wheat, but he sent a man on ahead. Joseph sold as a slave. They put cruel chains on his ankles, an iron collar around his neck, until word came to Pharaoh and God confirmed his promise. God sent the king to release him. The Pharaoh set Joseph free. He appointed him master of his palace, put him in charge of all of his business, to personally instruct his princess and train his advisors in wisdom. Then Israel entered. Jacob immigrated to the land of Ham. God gave his people lots of babies. Soon their numbers alarmed their foes. He turned the Egyptians against his people. They abused and cheated God's servants. Then he sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he also chose. They worked marvels in that spiritual wasteland, miracles in the land of Ham. He spoke darkness, and it turned dark. They couldn't see what they were doing. He turned all their water to blood, so that all of their fish died. He made frogs swarm through the land, even in the king's bedroom. He gave the word and flies swarmed. Gnats filled the air. He substituted hail for rain. He stabbed their land with lightning. He wasted their vines and fig trees, smashed their groves of trees to splinters. With the word, he brought in locusts, millions of locusts, armies of locusts. They consumed every blade of grass in the country and picked up the ground clean of produce. He struck down every firstborn in the land, the first fruits of the virile powers. He led Israel out, their arms filled with the loot, and no one among them, even his tribes, stumbled. Egypt was glad to have them go. They were scared to death of them. God spread a cloud to keep them cool throughout the day and the fire to light their way through the night. They prayed, and he brought quail, filled them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock and poured out water. It flowed like a river through the desert, all because he remembered his covenant, his promise to Abraham, his servant. Our Old Testament reading today comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verses 10 through 24. But up in arms now, the entire community was talking of hurling stones at him. Just then, the bright glory of God appeared at the tent 
of the meeting. Every Israelite saw it. And God said to Moses, How long will these people treat me like dirt? How long refuse to trust me? And with all the signs that I've done among them, I've had enough. I'm going to hit them with a plague and kill them. But I'll make you into a nation bigger and stronger than they ever were. But Moses said to God, The Egyptians are going to hear about this. You delivered this people from Egypt with a great show of strength. And now this? The Egyptians will tell everyone. They've already heard that you are God and that you are on the side of this people. That you are present among them. That they see you with their own eyes in the cloud that hovers over them. And the pillar of clouds that leads them by day and the pillar of fire at night. If you kill the entire people in one stroke, all the nations that have heard about what was going on will say, since God couldn't get these people into the land which he had promised to give them, he slaughtered them out in the wilderness. Now please, let the power of the master expand. Enlarge itself greatly along the lines you have laid out earlier when you said, God, slow to get angry and huge in loyal love, forgiving iniquity and rebellion and sin. Still, Never just with whitewashing sin, but extending the fallout of parent sin to children and to the third and even the fourth generation. Please forgive the wrongdoings of the people out of the extravagance of your loyal love. Just as long from the time they left Egypt, you have been forgiving these people. God said, I forgive them honoring your words. But as I live and as the glory of God fills the whole earth, not a single person of those who saw my glory saw the miracle signs I did in Egypt and the wilderness and who have tested me over and over and over again, turning a deaf ear to me. Not one of them will set eyes on the land I so solemnly promised to their ancestors. No one who has treated me with such repeated contempt We'll see it. But my servant Caleb, this is a different story. He has a different spirit. He follows me passionately. I'll bring him into the land that he scouted, and his children will inherit it. Our New Testament reading today comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 1 through 13. Remember our history, friends, and be warned. All of our ancestors were led by the provincial cloud and taken miraculously through the sea. They went through the waters in a baptism like ours. As Moses led them from enslaving death to salvation life, they all ate and drank identical food and drink, meals provided daily by God. They drank from the rock, God's fountain for them, that stayed with them wherever they were. And the rock was Christ. But just experiencing God's wonder and grace didn't seem to mean much. Most of them were defeated by temptation during the hard times in the desert, and God was not pleased. The same thing could happen to us. We must be on guard so that we never get caught up wanting our own way as they did. And we must not turn our religion into a circus as they did. First, the people partied. Then they threw a dance. We must not be sexually promiscuous. They paid a price for that. Remember, 23,000 deaths in one day. We must never try to get Christ to serve us instead of us serving him. They tried it, and God launched the epidemic of poisonous snakes. We must be careful not to stir up discontent. Discontent destroyed them. These are the warning markers. Danger! In our history books, written down so that we don't repeat their mistakes. Our position in the story are parallel. They are at the beginning, we are at the end. And we are just as capable of messing it up as they were. Don't be so naive and self-confident. You're not exempt. You could fall flat on your face 
as easily as anyone else. Forget about self-confidence. It's useless. Cultivate God confidence. No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through it. And here ends our readings for the day. Peace and have a good day.